Hey folks, it's Brian. <clears throat> we got to play RQG tonight, and it was a slow session. I apologize, but if you like, you know, listening, watching live play stuff, it's in the description. Um, it went really slow because I'm not a Glorantophile. I don't have all this um, information about the setting in my head, and I don't like going off the cuff of stuff that I don't know. <laughs> I guess what it comes down to. So, uh, the party is looking at some maps that they got from Queen Laika of the area. They're trying to find, you know, this stretch of land, either a, a finger or a ridge line that's got a river on one side, and there's a human village next to the river, and, you know, the, there's the ruins are on top of there. <clears throat> the ruins themselves are, are, are you know, baked clay, solid structure but completely broken down no ceiling stuff just walls and pieces here and there fairly large set of single set of of, of, of uh, ruins it's not a villa right it's much bigger than that right but it's not like all spread out like a village would be or <clears throat> or you know room gate when the bat landed on it kind of thing no it's not not like that it's it's, it's different it's a, it's a complex but, you know, they don't know that. And I couldn't really say that out loud. Um, and so they're looking at the map, picking out different spots and, <clears throat> excuse me, and things trying to, you know, guess, could it be this, could it be that? And so I start having making, you know, Homeland lore rolls. What do you know about this place? What do you know about Tarkor's Keep? What do you know about um, uh, the Rainbow Mounds? What do you know about uh, the Boulder Ruins? What do you know about... Um, the manor ruins, you know, these different places and things, right? And there's some discussion about, you know, any of these special, you know, diamond things on this map they've got. That, well, I gave them access to this map to give them something to look at. Uh, I guess I could have built my own maps off of that and just made scans of all these pieces of paper with different... <laughs> made them rifle through it all, but that would not have been fun. Um, if we were at a table... That would have been cool. I would have liked to have done that, but we were. Um, so eventually they get to where they just can't figure it out. They just don't know. They don't know. They don't know. And finally, they got around to, well, let's ask somebody who might know. And go, well, hey, yeah, let's go to the temple and do some research. Do you have library use? Oh, yeah, Lars has. Lars. David has library use. Let's go to the little library, and we can hire a couple of scribes to help us as well. There are two available. And, you know, a couple lunars out, and we've got six rolls during the day to see if we can actually find something right and out of those six rolls only one was made it was david and it was this first goal so in the morning david found some stuff on well, the things they were looking at and it became obvious at that point that yeah it's got to be the uh, boulder ruins okay so now we got to get the boulder ruins how we're going to get there and um and no encounters the entire way it was it was pretty wild um so they after Apple Lane, they spent the night at Tarkalor's Keep. There's a little bit of, of um, role play going on there with Tarkalor and his wife, who's uh, Les Melder and has a thing against um, the Kalimar, although she's in Kalimar lands, married to a Kalimar guy, and, you know, that kind of thing. They've got this tension going on. I'm not sure what's behind all that, but... Um, <clears throat> So there's some in, interesting interaction. One of the players, uh, Miriam, actually has hate the Les Melder tribe. So you know, there's some this back and forth kind of stuff going on. And then Lars or David tries to, to you know bring things down, let's calm things down, We're making some roles and, and doing some role playing stuff. It was you know kind of fun actually. Um, and then they head to Green. green stone and the green stone temple because they didn't find out that there was a goddess that was um, rescued some people say it was stolen by the earl marthy other people say it was rescued from the ruins um, and placed into the green stone temple which is actually carved into uh, a rock face and i don't remember i think that's correct that sounds right. I remember that from somewhere. So there's some discussion there and that kind of thing. 
<clears throat> so they head over to uh, Greenstone, um, and I thought the Greenstone Temple was a Meyer Temple, but it's not. It's a major temple. It's not necessarily as big as um, the Earth Temple at Clearwine, but it's bigger than the Earth Temple in Johnstown, because the Johnstown Earth people, Earth Temple people, come here to you know. They, this is a higher, a higher echelon temple for them. So at, at first I was talking about, okay, yeah, they got a couple of beasts of gory, so so Arrestor's got some some talking to people and see what's going on. And if there's only two of them, they're probably bored with each other. Have you something new? Be cool. And there's one on guard, but no, this is a major one. So there's there's a whole troop here, <laughs> and so there's going to be you know shrines and minor temples to various earth deities in here too. So this is a big deal. And there's a little discussion as well in there about my perception of a shrine is a thing, right? And this thing is like <clears throat> a holy place, right? And you go to this holy place to commune with your deity, and through that communion in this holy place for this, you you can learn this one rune spell, because this shrine is designed for this one rune spell. But in looking at um, learning rune spells, um, maybe some comments if you watched any of my uh, weapons and equipment book review. Um, I think I talk about this kind of spin somewhere where, you know, you've got a temple, you've got priests here, you've got sub-priests, you've got these um, shrines that have got god talkers and priests supporting them, and you've got uh, minor altars, you know, minor temples to other associated deities there which have priests. So a temple's got a lot, a lot of people. I was kind of surprised at, at, at one point about that so find out this was a major temple kind of changed things and like I said it was slow because as we're doing things they're talking I'm looking stuff up I know I saw something somewhere in one of these books about this <clears throat> so uh, but they they're what they want to do is they want to commune with with the uh, with the green goddess the goddess there right on you know what happened to the old temple complex? We believe there are baboons living there. We're not sure what they're doing, but we think it's bad, and we want to know what's going on, and you know, can we stop them, kind of thing, right? And um, so now we get some more role play stuff. Where, okay, none of us are Rinaldi. We've got uh, a Bavistagor, we've got an Orlanthi, so they're associated cults, so there's a relationship there, but none of these guys can go to the Holy Holies and talk to the gods themselves. None of them, period, right? Um, so, you know, how are we going to do this? Well, you need to convince one of the priestesses to, on their behalf, go in and do this thing, right? So there's some discussion back and forth on what can we do and how can we modify, and um, it came down to um, Jarstekos doing orate. In fact, he had a script of some kind he read about um, as a hero, as a um, husband protector, in exchange for a boon, he will go and do a service kind of thing. And it, it, the way he said it, he had to have been reading it out of something. I'm going to find where he got that. That was really, really cool. I really liked that. Um, and so he's, he's thinking that, yeah. If he can convince her to do this, they'll have him do some kind of task afterwards, right? That's okay. We can figure that out later. Uh, so they cast Glamour on him, so his charisma goes up, gives him another bonus. Um, he makes a uh, a uh, inspiration, a, a passion inspiration role with um, Devotion to Orlanth, which he got special on, so that's plus 30. And then being an associated cult, I gave him plus 10. And then doing this cool Orlanthi, you know, I'm the husband protector, uh, I need your help and I will do something in exchange kind of thing. I gave him the bonus of 10 for that. So he ended up with a 125% chance. So what kind of chance of having a cool special kind of thing? But it was a regular success. But um, the way they worded some of the discussion while I was thinking about, okay, what's the answer really going to be like? Just phew, light bulb went off my head. This is exactly what's going to come out. So the priestess comes out. She's got sweat dripping down her, her, her face. She's breathing really heavy, hyperventilating kind of thing. She is um, 
shocked, scared, astounded kind of thing, and starts blurting this stuff out about they are in the bowels of the mother. They are, they are delving into thing into knowledge they they need to leave alone. Uh, there's great danger. Um, they're they're searching something the mother doesn't understand. Um, of course, they obviously think chaos automatically off the top of this. Um, you know, so the stuff's coming out. You need to stop it. So that's the task. Go and stop these people. <clears throat> well, they go, well, the players start saying, well, who can come and help us? If, if they had people go and do it themselves, they would just do it themselves, right? Um, and, and I'm willing to augment with NPCs, but you've got to convince people to do stuff. I mean, these people have responsibilities. <laughs> They're doing things at the temple. They've got responsibilities, whether they're abuse to gore guardians or they're, you know, actual priestesses, you know, running worship services and stuff. You know, they have responsibilities. Um, so they didn't even bother trying to convince. They, they said that they kind of came to the conclusion, okay, we've convinced enough as it is. Okay, I mean, I, I, I've had earth priestesses go with the party before. Um, I wouldn't necessarily care about a Vista Gore going either. I, one or the other, maybe both. <clears throat> but you've got to convince them on why they need to come with them, why they need to help them. They can afford to you know, come now, kind of thing. So, but they didn't bother. So they're talking about trying to get to the ruins just before dawn, um, so they can you know watch as dawn comes up and see what's happening and what's going on and that kind of thing. They send the owl out. It's about seven miles away, so it was, and that's not even as the owl flies, right? It's an angle. <clears throat> so the owl, the owl goes out there. He got a quick success on his scan, so um, he didn't see any motion. Uh, on the surface, but there was definite light coming from some underground source. Um, and so she tells them that. Um, they decide to take a quick nap now, get up er, you know, zero dark early, travel for three, four hours to get close to where the, um, the place is. Um, and then, you know, Rest there till dawn, kind of deal. Okay. Traveling at night. Um, I have gone hiking at night. It's not really that hard unless you've got canopy, right? Stars and the moon give a lot of light, except the fact that it is, uh, it was between dying and black moon. So there's not a lot of moonlight. But, you know, there's some planets up there and there are stars. You know, there, there, there's some light. You can actually see at night. If, if your eyes get used to it, you can actually see at night. <clears throat> but I want them to make some kind of, you know, navigation roles, right? I know basically where they're going. Um, so, hey, survival or tracking, I'll take either of those. Just so you can, you know, taking the best way up these off-road passes they're going up. Uh, one of the players was convinced they were going to just get totally lost in the dark out in the woods. Go, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. This is to give you, you know, how easy of a path are we finding to get where we need to go. And then they mentioned, hey, we got the owl. The owl knows where it is. The owl can go back, but come on, the owl, fly back, come back. Well, you're going the wrong way, or come flop down. A little to the left. And it gets kind of hokey to me on that case, but okay, I'll give you a bonus um, because the owl is good to go. Um, the rest has got pretty high tracking, so it's not tracking a track. She's using her tracking skills to find the best way to get to where they think they need to go. <clears throat> and so, yeah, they get up there. They kind of camp out. The owl is sitting in a tree. You know, because there's a clearing. It's actually open. Um, and so he's in a tree watching. Uh, daylight, you know, dawn comes up. And um, a handful of uh, baboons come out, uh, including a bunch of little ones. And uh, they scatter in three different groups. Two go off this direction and one off this way. So... Maybe if they came around from this direction, they might be able to get there without being seen. Three gigantic male baboons do pop up and you know station themselves, keep an eye out on the woods kind of deal. Um, and that's kind of in yeah, that's where we ended the session pretty much. Um, Miriam did want to send her fetch to go out there and see what kind of power levels of creatures and numbers that they're
they're going to have to deal with. And while in my perception, the spirit plane and the mater uh, material plane, the, the middle plane, are you know, pretty close together. They're not exact, right? So, and the, the fetch can only see power. <laughs> so it's like, go that way a thousand yards, start looking around, you know, that kind of thing, right? <clears throat> it's in the spirit plane, so it can go through. So there's got to be some kind of leap through. A house with spirits that are in the spirit plane you know to manifest and attack you, uh, spirit, do spirit combat on you to take you over unless they can't see through, right? So that's why I say they're, they're close, but they're not the same, you know, that kind of thing. So I've taken those as notes of things for me to follow up on. So when we start our next session, okay, Miriam, your fetch came back. This is what she found. There are <clears throat> umpteen critters out there. X are below our power level. Y are above our power level. All the rest are in our power level, plus or minus five things. And uh, we'll see how things go from there. Happy gaming.